Microsoft just wrapped up their big showcase that we've been waiting on for the Xbox Series X games, and I've got a lot of thoughts. First off, before I talk about anything else, I just need to get this out of the way for me. I am so extremely happy about two specific announcements we got. I wish we had a little more gameplay or like actual full footage beyond just a teaser trailer for these, but being a big RPG fan, I am losing my mind that we just got confirmation that Fable is actually finally coming back. I am so happy for that. And to top that off, Obsidian, one of my favorite studios, is making a first person RPG in the same style of Elder Scrolls games, most commonly probably known by most people for Skyrim, taking place in the same world as their Pillars of Eternity games. This is something for, I think, a very specific audience, at least right now until we get more gameplay, but I definitely fall inside of that audience and I am so, so happy that's a thing that's happening. I was really hoping to see Obsidian announce some kind of RPG today and this is not what I expected. I was thinking maybe another party-based one like what they normally do, but this is a direction that I am really excited about the potential for. Now, that aside, it was a solid conference. I think it was good. I don't think it was anything super groundbreaking. I think Microsoft dropped a lot of good info. I think there's a lot of great variety in what they showed, but ultimately there's just something missing that I think helps drive a lot more hype. And I think the big issue really is we didn't have a ton of what I would call console pushers. The show opened up with Halo Infinite, which looks really good. I like the idea that they're kind of embracing this more kind of open exploration style campaign, something along the lines of what they did with Gears 5, but in the Halo universe, at least that's the way it looked. I'm not completely sold on the grappling hook. It's, I don't know, mechanics like that are always kind of neat, but I always need to actually like try them in game to learn whether or not I love them or not, and if they feel like a real necessity. But I loved the pacing of it. I love the way that the gunplay looked. There's a lot there that I think was done well. And of course, their one more thing moment at the end was revealing Fable. Also really just a hype trailer, not any kind of sign of what it's going to play like or what any kind of real gameplay looks like, but the fact that it's even happening, I'm excited for. These were really the big capstone moments for it. Everything in the middle was lots and lots and lots of what I would say kind of middle tier, more direct audience focused kind of stuff. A lot of which was really cool. There are a lot of things they showed off and announced that I did not expect at all. I mean, we're getting a brand new Stalker game out of nowhere. I mean, the last one came out, I want to say it was like 2008, 2009. And getting a new one that's going to be at least a launch exclusive for Xbox is great. And this was actually something that I think was kind of a recurring thing too, is that they use the term console launch exclusive a lot, which implies that a lot of these games are going to come out on Xbox and probably PC at the same time with a PlayStation launch sometime in the future. But a lot of those still looked really great. Medium, I think was one of the most interesting titles as far as something that's like a brand new property. We're getting a new war Hammer game that looks like it's going to be the same basic concept as Vermintide, but it's using the 40k universe instead of Warhammer Fantasy, which is great. And we've got a brand new game from the same people that are responsible for the SteamWorld franchise. It doesn't look like it's actually officially connected to the SteamWorld games, but it's a new title called The Gunk, which looks great. We also got additional looks at some games we already knew about, including Psychonauts 2 and Everwild from Rare Games. Those also looked fantastic. A lot of stuff that, again, I think looked good, but was also all targeted at smaller audiences. There was a lot of titles where I think there's something for everyone, but it wasn't a moment where there was necessarily three or four games back to back to back where the internet in total was losing their mind. I think something else that was a little bit of an issue is that while a lot of the games we saw looked great, I don't think anything was really a strong flex for the power that Microsoft has been talking about for the Xbox Series X. When you look at some of the biggest games they showed off, like the opening gameplay with Halo, and compare that to what PlayStation showed for Ratchet & Clank, Spider-Man, or Horizon Forbidden West, I just feel like it didn't do the best job really being like, look how powerful our system is. I think it looked really good. I'm not saying it was a bad looking game, but when you just side-by-side -side compare with some of the stuff that Sony showed off, I think Sony did a better job of really trying to be like, this is what next gen looks like, and Microsoft still hasn't really fully capitalized on that. I think what we have here are a lot of announcements for games that are interesting to a lot of different people, but it's individual titles and the kind of stuff that I think will help someone eventually maybe want to buy an Xbox or even just pick up those games on PC if they have a solid gaming PC. I'm not sure if these were the kind of announcements they needed to sell systems right on launch day. And this is really, I think, the big recurring theme in my head recently when it comes to the whole debate of like PlayStation 5 versus Xbox Series X. Again, I personally don't really care about console wars. I think a lot of people pay attention to these things because they want to decide which one they want to invest their money into. And that is a very important decision. And ultimately, I think at least right now, 
a lot of people are gonna be going with PlayStation right now. There's still some other factors we don't know about. We don't have prices yet on the Series X. There is, of course, that kind of mystery behind the veil of whether or not they're going to reveal a cheaper version as well, the whole Project Lockhart situation. There's a lot more they can do that I think is going to help build more and more excitement. But I think as things stand currently, PlayStation 5, especially with the number of people that are actively using PS4, are just more naturally going to gravitate towards that as their first next-gen purchase. Looking at the exclusive games for both systems, me, personally, I'm actually a bit more excited for what Xbox has going on. There's stuff on both consoles I'm really excited for. I want to play Ratchet and Clank, I definitely want to pick up Spider-Man Miles Morales, I'm excited for Horizon Forbidden West, but Personally, I really like RPGs, and Fable and Avowed are two very strong wins for that. But that's me personally. As far as what I think the majority of people, the kind of stuff that is the wide mass appeal and is the kind of stuff that ends up pushing console sales go, I just don't think Xbox brought quite as much to the table as what PlayStation did with their last showcase. That being said, I am really curious to see what this all means for three or four years from now. Because I think one of the most important takeaways from this press conference, even if there wasn't necessarily a ton of super, super hype stuff for lots of people, was again, that variety. I loved how many different kinds of games they were showing off. It wasn't just simply action shooter title after action shooter title. We got stuff that was, we got RPGs, we got narrative driven things. We got very beautiful looking explorative style games. There was a good variety there. And a lot of which are going to be at least launch exclusive to Xbox or are actual permanent exclusives. And so with Microsoft really having this kind of renewed dedication to exclusive games, I mean, I feel like we already have seen more now than we did for the entire Xbox One life cycle. Having that paired with a lot of stuff we talked about last week when we had things like the Xbox Game Pass is now going to include xCloud. People are able to play Xbox games over their phones just with one simple membership. There's a lot that Xbox is doing that I think is laying the groundwork for a strong long-term growth for the system. Because again, there's a lot of damage they need to undo from what happened back at the Xbox One launch. You know, things were very neck and neck during the 360 versus PS3 era, and that very heavily went away at the initial launch of PS4 and Xbox One. And this all builds towards something where I think, again, I don't think Xbox is going to have some kind of huge surprise comeback during this holiday season where the Series X is going to demolish the PS5 in sales. I really don't think that's going to happen, but I am really interested in seeing where the long-term conversion goes. I want to see what happens when more and more people try out Game Pass. I want to see what happens as they announce more and more games and as more of these titles come out, because similar to the PlayStation conference, one issue is that a lot of these games were announced and shown off, some of which I am very excited for, but they were simply announced. I think the cautionary tale here is kind of like what happened back in 2014 with the Xbox One, where a lot of brand new games were promised and shown off, and a lot of them ended up not actually happening. A really good example of that being Scalebound. And I don't think that's necessarily what's happening here. I think Xbox has learned from that mistake. And so a lot of these titles, I would think, I would hope, are planned for within the next two to three years, not necessarily something that's going to be four or five. I think the main takeaway from my brain right now is that with what we've seen so far, there's still some unknowns like pricing and release date and that kind of stuff. But as far as just the games go from this showcase and what PlayStation showed at their own event last month, I really think PlayStation is going to take it this year for sure but I'm very curious to see how things develop over the next three or four years.